Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bridget Worry here. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Let me get this thing right. Okay, so here we are. So, of course, I got to ask you, did you guys take time out to study the Word? Remember, this is where we get our divine power and instructions from. We have to study the Word of God. That's a must. That is a must. And, of course, we know we're running out of time. We're running out of time. And we know Jesus is a gentleman, and he keep on knocking on the door of, of our hearts. And he state, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. I just seen one of my cat came out, so that's a good thing. It's a good thing. So let us go, before we go into our topic today, let us go ahead and bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and the Father, I thank you for this day, Father. I ask you to be with us as we continue studying your word. Father, I ask you at this moment that you will decrease me so that you will be increased is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, Sister Canston, thank you so much for stopping by. Hey, Connie, thank you for stopping by. So as we uh, continue our discussion in the Ministry of Healing, that's one of my other favorite books. You know, I've got uh, many of my favorite books, right? Uh, I think one of my best one is the, of course, the Steps to Christ. So if you guys uh, don't have this copy, um, you know, just give me a call. I'll be more than happy to send you a copy. So as we go into our topic today, consideration for the poor. Okay, but before we go into that, of course, I've got to do my scripture reading, right? Scripture reading. So scripture which reading is coming from Deuteronomy 15. Uh, verses 9 Deuteronomy chapter 15 verses 9 and it state beware that there be not a taught in thy wicked heart saying the seventh year the year of release is at hand and thine eyes be evil against thy poor brother and thou givest him not and he cried unto the Lord against thee and it shall be sin unto thee because remember, if you uh, go and read um, uh, Deuteronomy 15, starting at the first ver verse, it says, At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. So people that was indebted to whomever was released after seven years. And so if you continue reading that, so there was a time that God uh, told the people that we need to release the individual that owes a debt, okay? So we need to be very mindful of that as we continue studying this topic today, consideration for the poor. These arrangements did not, however, wholly do away with poverty. It was not God's purpose that poverty should be wholly cease. It is one of his means for the development of character. The poor, he said, shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thy hand wide unto thy brother, and to thy poor, and to the needy in thy land. You can find this in Deuteronomy 15.11. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hands from thy poor brother, but thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanted. And that would be Deuteronomy 15, uh, verses 7 and 8. If thy brother be wax poor, and fallen in decay with thee, thou shalt... Then thou shalt release him, yea, thou be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live within thee. And you can find this in Leviticus 25, 35. When ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. When thou cuttest down thy harvest in the field, thou shalt... Thou hast forgotten a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. So if you were in the fields back in those days, and you maybe you left a tree, or maybe half a tree that has fruits on it, whatever, he's, he's there. God tell us, do not go back because you should leave that there for the poor, for the poor, okay? So he goes on and he says, let me go back. Say, and when thou beatest thy olive tree, thou shalt not go over the bough again. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not uh, green, uh, 
and lay it afterwards. It shall be for the strangers, for the fatherless, and for the widow. You can find this in uh, Leviticus 19, 9. Deuteronomy 24, 19 to 21, okay? None need fear that their liberality would bring them to want. Obedience to God's commandments should surely result in prosperity. What did I say? Obedience to God's commandments would surely result in prosperity. For this thing God said, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. And you can find this in Deuteronomy uh, 15, 10, and then also verses 6. So if you consider the poor, we... Uh, if we have an abundance, all of us in America has an abundance, okay? So we are an individual. God has put us in a position that we're supposed to be blessing somebody else, blessing somebody else. We need to be about our father's business. So if our brother or sister in need, we should be able to help them, okay? And then we should not be stating, you know, sometimes we think about, okay, well, they should do this, they should do that. No, no, no. God has put you in a position, put me in a position that I am able to help somebody else. So if you got uh, $2 and somebody needs a dollar, you give them a dollar. I mean, it's not going to, uh, I, 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 from my experience, I find that by giving, I receive more by giving. Okay, be joyful as giving. Just don't, um, you know, when sometime when we return our tithe and offering, we said, okay, I have to. No, you don't have to. It's just God tells you that you need to return. We need to return 10 of the tithe and offering, 10% of our tithe and offering, right? So, but we need to be uh, cheerful givers. And by being cheerful givers, God continued to bless us, bless us with our help, bless us with the job that we go to. He blesses us abundantly. I mean, sometimes it's not even material stuff that he blesses us with. Just by being uh, being able to hear, being able to see, be able to stand, be able to smell. Those are things I believe we just take for granted, just take for granted. And so my sister, my brother, we just need to be more considerate of the poor for the poor. God put them here for a reason and they will forever be here until Jesus comes back because he stayed. It is one of his means for development of character. So God placed the poor individual in our life or in our path to develop our character so we don't be selfish because we got our degrees and we uh, got prosperity. Even some people I know that don't have no degree, but they're very wealthy. It doesn't matter what level we are. God gave you the wealth in order for you and I to bless somebody else. So let us go about being a blessing to somebody else, okay? Let us be a, about our Father's business because we need to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, okay? So as ambassador, we need to be about our Father's business. So here is my hymn uh, today. It says, In the heart of Jesus. In the heart of Jesus, there is love for you. Love more pure and tender. Love more deep and true. Why should you be lonely? Why for friendship's sight? When the heart of Jesus has a full supply. In the minds of Jesus, there is thought for you. Warm as summer sunshine, sweet as the morning dew. Why should you be fearful? Why take anxious thought? Since the mind of Jesus cares for those he bought. Here's verses 3. In the field of Jesus, there is work for you. What did I say? In the fields of Jesus, there is work for you. Such as ever angels might rejoice to do. Why stand idling, siding for some life work grand, while the field of Jesus seek your reaping hands? Here's the last verse. In the home of Jesus, there's a place for you. Isn't that sweet? In the home of Jesus, there's a place for you. Glorious, bright, and joyous, calm and peaceful too. Why then, like a wanderer, roaming with weary
prayer and endurance patient prayer and endurance patient prayer and endurance okay so it should be uh, patient endurance and prayer patient endurance pep put some pep in your step so as we continue new, doing our going to our life work making sure that we do everything to the glory of God everything we do is to do the glory of God whether you're a stay-at-home mom you're an entrepreneur you are a retired uh, mom you're taking care of the grandkids wherever you find yourself do it to the glory of God and God will will give you the blessing that you need he will give you the strength that you need to go through whatever it is that he placed before you let us bow for prayer the kind of gracious and the Father, I thank you for this message, Father, that we need to be more cons have more consideration for the poor that you have that you have left us, Father. Continue to be with us, Father. Give us the power, Father, that we need to run from sin, Father. Give us the power to do your will. Father, we just surrender our life today, Father. Take us, mold us, shape us, and make us what you want us to be. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, my brothers and my sisters, so until tomorrow, we'll go into, let's see, my next topic for tomorrow. Um, business principles will be tomorrow topic, business principles, and that is going to be like a two-part. So until tomorrow, my sister, my brother, be blessed, and make sure that you do everything to the name, honor, and glory of your heavenly Father. Until tomorrow, take care.